welcome to the third lecture on toward effective leadership we are going to talk about universalist theories of leadership today on the whole in this module in the coming few days we will be talking about three types of theories universalist theories behavioral theories and contingency theories so before actually going into discussion about universalist theories let us briefly look at how leadership research has emerged over a period of time we will talk about these one by one now around 1900s there was this trait approach which has been discussed and then over a period of time behavioral perspective has emerged by the time it is 1950s and around 1960s as you see fielder's contingency theory which talks about enduring personality like qualities has emerged and later in around 1970s we have houses path goal theory which talks about behavior as such so as you see the four theories around 1900s the trait theories around 1950s the behavioral theories which talk about tasks which talk about people around 1960s the fielder's contingency theory around 1970s houses path goal theory so these were the theories which have emerged till 1970 in today's discussion in the present module we are going to cover till contingency theories let us start with universalist theories in today's lecture there was a search for one key characteristic or a cluster of key characteristics held by effective leaders and the argument was that leaders with these traits will be successful regardless of the situation so here the emphasis is on either one key characteristic or a cluster of key characteristics universalist theories represent the earliest and simplest approaches to the study of leadership so today we are going to deal with two of these theories the great man or woman theory and the trait theory let us start with great man or great woman theory for that matter it reflects the belief that great leaders are born they are not made it's a belief that the personal qualities and abilities make certain great persons natural leaders so if historical leaders have to come to life again then looks like they will become natural leaders once again owing to the traits that they have had however with this theory of the traits a great man or great woman there is little evidence actually in order to support this theory in certain countries we see that relatives close relatives or relatives of great leaders are also put into positions of power this actually may indicate that there is some general faith in this notion of what is called inborn leadership ability then comes the trait theory traits the definition is seen on the slide they are consistent and enduring physical and personality attributes which are associated with leader success much of this research involved identifying certain physical characteristics as well height appearance energy level all these have been considered there are other characteristics according to researchers such as intelligence and the personality traits like extroversion dominance or achievement which were also associated with effective leaders according to certain theorists it was presumed for example that those who were intelligent extroverted who are dominant are most likely to become good leaders the results of these earlier studies were inconclusive according to some researchers and they showed no solid evidence of any single trait common to all effective leaders we do not see any one single trait which is common to all effective leaders each leader for that matter behind his success there may be certain other traits which may not be visible and common to everyone now let us go to this slide and see how the trait approaches look at leadership so leadership traits according to trait theory as you see on this slide intelligence dominance self confidence energy level task relevance knowledge it also includes drive desire to lead honesty integrity self confidence cognitive ability knowledge of the business so these were the traits that were talked about much talked about leaders are supposed to be bright self confident high energy people 
who know something about the situation they are trying to affect and take control when they must. We, if we put all these traits together, then this is what we may see. However, there is one more way of looking at it. Leadership does not involve one trait, but a constellation of traits, that is a complex of traits put together. Research on more complex constellations of leader characteristics, like for example, as you see on this slide, flexibility, charisma, social intelligence, all together suggest that possession of these complex traits are important for leadership and these constellation of traits predict success. Let us take for example, leader flexibility. Leader flexibility is not one single trait. It is a complex set of abilities to perceive and understand the social situations, to communicate effectively and to act wisely in a variety of social settings according to these researchers. And it might be better termed as social intelligence or social competence according to some researchers. Every theory has its strengths and weaknesses. We have talked about what trait theories are and how they present significant traits of leaders. However, there has been a lot of criticism that these theories have gathered. The major problem with the original trait approach to leadership was that it was too general. It is not that the same general traits are seen in every leader. It is unlikely that any one trait will be associated with effective leadership in all situations, not only all situations, but also all kinds of tasks and among all groups. So, we are talking about several components over here, situations, the kind of situations, the kind of tasks and the kind of followers. All these may bring a lot of variation. Hence, this gener general way of looking at traits has not been acceptable by majority of people. So, today students, we have seen universalist theories of leadership. In the next lecture, we will talk about behavioral theories of leadership. So, for today, thank you for being with us.